when the only information that we have for an unknown function f of x equals y is a set of points p sub 0, p sub 1, through p sub n, then we can attempt to approximate the function using what is called an interpolating polynomial. The one requirement that we impose on these n plus 1 points, or nodes, is that no two x coordinates should be the same. That is, x sub j is not equal to x sub k when the index j is different from the index k. This condition is necessary if f is to be a function. It is a well-known fact that under this condition, there is a unique polynomial whose degree is no greater than n that passes through all the n plus 1 points. This polynomial is called the Lagrange polynomial through p sub 0, p sub 1 through p sub n. Denoting this polynomial function by L of x, L of x can be written as a sum of n plus 1 fractions with each fraction corresponding to a specific node. The graph of f might look like the curve that's given on the right, with the different nodes p sub 0 through pn indicated by their respective x coordinates. The graph of the Lagrange polynomial should pass through the very same nodes. While at any other x coordinate, such as x equals t, where t is not equal to x of j for j equals 0 through n, L of t need not be the same as f of t. We designate the error at each x coordinate to be e of x, and we define this to be f of x minus l of x. And so at x equals t, e of t equals f of t minus l of t. Each node x sub j is special because f of x sub j is equal to l of x sub j. And so e of x sub j, which is equal to f of x sub j minus l of x sub j, is equal to zero. Our main goal for this lecture is to determine a formulation for e of t for t not equal to x of j. To continue with the derivation for the formula of e of t, we first cite a theorem which will play a major role in our calculations. The theorem is called Rolle's theorem. Let g be a function whose derivative exists on an open interval, containing x equals a and x equals b, with a different from b. Suppose that g of a is equal to g of b. Then there exists a value c between a and b, such that g prime of c equals 0. We apply Rolle's theorem to a special case. Suppose that the function g crosses the x-axis at a value x equals r sub 0, and then again at a second value r sub 1. So g of r sub 0 and g of r sub 1 are equal since they are both equal to 0, so that the function whose graph is given satisfies a main condition of Rolle's theorem, so that if g is differentiable, then there should be a value which we call c sub 1 between r sub 0 and r sub 1, where the tangent is horizontal or that g prime of c sub 1 is equal to 0. So if g continues and intersects the x-axis again at another value r sub 2, there should be another value c sub 2 between r sub 1 and r sub 2, where g prime of c sub 2 equals 0. In short, between consecutive x-intercepts of a differentiable function, there should be a value where the derivative is equal to 0 or the tangent is horizontal. So how do we use Rolle's theorem to derive the formula for the error function? We define a function g of x to be equal to f of x minus the Lagrange polynomial function capital L of x, and then we subtract a complicated expression, which is made up of e of t 
and then times a fraction whose numerator is the product of the quantities x minus x sub 0, x minus x sub 1, and so on, all the way through x minus x sub n. The denominator is made up of the product of the quantities t minus x sub 0, t minus x sub 1, all the way through t minus x sub n. Here, the value t should be different from x sub j, for j equals 0 to n. Let us see what happens when we plug in x sub 0 into the function g. So for the first two terms on the right side, we get f of x sub 0 minus l of x sub 0. But this should be equal to 0 because f of x sub j equals l of x sub j for j equals 0 to n. And when x is equal to x sub 0, this factor in this fraction is equal to 0, making this entire product equal to 0. And so g of x sub 0 is equal to 0. The same will be true if we plug in x sub 1 or x sub 2 or any of the values through x sub n for x in g. Now this makes a total of n plus 1 x intercepts for the function g. But we're not done yet. There is one more x intercept. Let us see what happens when we replace x by t. The first two terms on the right side give us f of t minus l of t, which is simply e of t. And for the numerator of the fraction in the third term, we get the quantities t minus x sub 0, t minus x sub 1, all the way through t minus x sub n. And observe that the fraction is equal to 1. And so what we have is e of t minus e of t, which is equal to 0. And so g of t is also equal to 0. This brings the grand total of x-intercepts, or zeros for g, to n plus 2. Rawls' theorem says that we should be able to find zeros of g prime in between the zeros of g that is, in the gaps formed by the zeros of g. But if g has n plus 2 zeros, as we had found out, then there should be n plus 1 gaps in between these distinct zeros. Therefore, g prime should have at least n plus 1 distinct zeros. Extending Rolle's theorem to cover g prime, assuming that g double prime exists, then we should be able to find zeros of g double prime in the gaps formed by the zeros of g prime. Therefore, g double prime will have at least n zeros. Assuming that we can take derivatives of g as many times as we want, the number of guaranteed zeros will keep on decreasing by 1. Moreover, the number of guaranteed zeros plus the order of the derivative is equal to n plus 2. Therefore, the nth derivative of g, if it does exist, should have at least two distinct zeros. And finally, if the n plus 1 derivative of g exists, then we are guaranteed at least one zero for the n plus 1 derivative. Let us give this guaranteed zero for the n plus 1 derivative of g a name. Let us call it c star. So the n plus 1 derivative of g applied to c star is equal to zero. The first term in the n plus 1 derivative of g is the n plus 1 derivative of f. We evaluate this derivative at c star. We take a look at the special case to find the n plus 1 derivative of l. We take the monomial x squared and find its derivative, which of course is 2x. Differentiate again and we get 2. And finally, we differentiate again to get the third derivative of x squared, and we get 0. While the calculations that we have just shown for x squared does not constitute a proof, one can show by induction that if one takes the derivative of a polynomial more times than the degree of the polynomial, one ends up with 0. As a special case, the n plus 1 derivative of x to the nth power is equal to 0. 
a similar result is the n plus 1 derivative of x to the n plus 1 is equal to the factorial of n plus 1. We apply this result to find the n plus 1 derivative of L of x. One might guess that it should be 0, but why should it be 0? Remember that the Lagrange polynomial is supposed to pass through all these n plus 1 points that lie on the graph of f. The Lagrange polynomial has to have the smallest degree as well, and that degree we already know cannot be greater than n. And so we are actually differentiating far too many times compared to the degree of capital L. And so the n plus 1 derivative of capital L is equal to 0. For the n plus 1 derivative of the third term in the formulation of g, the only part that matters is the numerator of the fraction that is multiplied to e of t. It is the only part that depends on x. Everything else is a constant. This numerator is a polynomial and we seek out the highest degree by multiplying out the x terms in each factor. There are n plus 1 factors and so the degree of the numerator is n plus 1. Each of the other terms will have degree no bigger than n so that the n plus 1 derivatives of each of those terms is 0, using the same principle that we applied to find the n plus 1 derivative of capital L. Since the degree of the numerator is n plus 1, its n plus 1 derivative is the factorial of n plus 1. Therefore, the n plus 1 derivative of the third term of g of x is equal to minus e of t times the factorial of n plus 1 divided by the product of the different t minus x of j's. Solving for e of t, e of t is equal to the n plus 1 derivative of f evaluated at c star divided by the factorial of n plus 1 times the product of the different t minus x of j's. Here, c star depends on t and lies on the interval that contains x of 0, x of 1 through x of n and t.